view a ham. Because this church is truly special. It is truly special. You just, you know, imagine uh, losing Lighthouse or going away or, 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 you know, sometimes if you, if, if someone died and you think about how precious a person is for you and things like this, so we don't w wish it for anybody. But sometimes when you lose something or when you go away from something that was uh, important to you, then you will suffer and you will lack this. And while we are having a church family such as God has provided to us, wow, we are so blessed. We are so blessed, and this church is truly special. When you look at the one year past, uh, that the video that Kathleen has made is so great to see so many activities that we forget that took place. That's why it's so important to have a, a review of the year and to realize that in many of these photos, you are there. You were part of the activities. The parents are there, the children are there, uh, different people are organizing, and it is a really, really wonderful. It's a small church. Lighthouse is just a small, tiny church, and yet a lot of things get covered and things are done with the, you know, when I go to Canada and I went there and I, I share sometimes just some pictures of what happened, and people are so touched. They would like their church to do things like we are, we are doing, and it is part of our activities. It is a, a part of our church life and things like that, and we do it together. But it, it's like when you go uh, outside that you realize what you have here. It is special what we have had in, in Lighthouse through the years, and it's, it's wonderful. The testimony of uh, Moses, thank you so much. It's very inspiring also because uh, going through is a story of uh, his Christian faith. It makes us go through uh, the Lighthouse story at the same time because he was there at the beginning when Pastor Steve went to China in the early years and Pastor Jennifer and all of this and still here and still blessed and a blessing. So. Anyway, thank you so much, everybody who stand here, who has been here. You know, this church, it's not perfect. Have you noticed that? It is not perfect. Your pastors are n far from being perfect, and we have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, m m uh, malfunctioning parts that we may have in the human side, either our personalities, our styles, or whatever it is, and our communication styles and everything. But one thing that we have is a call of God, a desire to glorify God, and, and a desire to share the truth, the truth of the Lord. We may, whether we do it well, or sometimes not so well, sometimes better than others, sometimes not so. We, we want to do it with the love of God. And uh, as Moses expresses, and Bridget also often tells me, and myself I can express that, my life in Hong Kong, our life in Hong Kong, has been great, has been um, uh, full and filled because of Lighthouse. Uh, without Lighthouse, uh, we would not be here. Uh, uh, I don't know what happened, what, what would have happened. But the church, Lighthouse, has met our needs, our, our social needs, our spiritual needs. We have learned a lot when we came from Canada. We were younger in the ministries, Pastor Steve and Sister Mary. They, they took me under their wings when I would go to China as an mission. They were there to guide and to encourage us and uh, all of these things, and they, they were there to, to build us up. And the, the, the lessons that I have learned from their example, not only from their Bible teaching, but also from their life, it's also very important. So I pray that when Bridget and I will say goodbye to Lighthouse, that we will have uh, something that we can leave into your life that will have made a difference and to uh, your families and to your marriage and to uh, your individual life. Amen? Amen. So anyway, I'm really uh, blessed to be part of Lighthouse and to celebrate 
28 years, which is very significant. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years to celebrate and to always go back. And uh, when I was in Canada, just before I came back here, in my Bible reading, I, was, uh, I rediscovered the second chronicle and uh, some books of the Old Testament that, uh, you know, have a new life. Maybe it is because I was listening to it in uh, audio uh, with my mother tongue Bible and my and friend. French Canadian uh, expressions, but I've discovered a lot of uh, life lessons in these books, and then Second Chronicle, and then after that the Minor Prophets and things, and it's it's so fresh, it's so fresh, and as as we celebrate our church anniversary, I want to remind each one of us that we should reflect. It's a good opportunity not only to reflect upon our history but to reflect even more on our faithfulness to God and to reflect upon our obedience to God and to reflect upon our worship to God and our prayer to God. We have 28 years in the making of the church and it is easy to just, uh, we have a history, we are here, we are part of the activities, but the most important is not really that aspect. It's, it's part of us being together. But it is what is taking place in our hearts. It's what God has been doing. It's who God is. It's where I'm going with my life. You remember in December last year, I had a close call and I was going to meet with Jesus. Uh, it, makes, it makes you think of, of things in a different perspective. And uh, looking through the book of uh, Second Chronicle make me think about uh, the faithfulness to God. W to take an inventory upon our life. Uh, where are we in our relationship uh, to the Lord? In our anniversary team, a joyful, patient, and faithful, it parallels very well the message of Second Chronicles. When the people of Judah were joyful, when they placed their hope in the Lord and they obeyed the Lord, when they were closely walking with the Lord, they were enjoying joy. You see many expressions of joy in the Old Testament when the people were uh, experiencing the blessing, the closeness, the nearness, uh, either in victory or in celebration, going to the temple. God was glorified and God was blessing. And that's why Second Chronicles comes, uh, make a lot of sense. First Chronicles, the life of David. Second Chronicles, the life of Solomon, the two greatest kings. God has blessed them for a reason, and uh, they were following. And they become the, the standards or the measuring stick. After these two kings, it's like the other kings are measured according to their obedience as David and Solomon. And that's the becoming the measuring sticks of their life. There were times in the life of Israel when they turned away from God and they had times of opposition, hardship, uh, times of affliction. And when they returned to the Lord, they had to go back to being faithful and prayer and to and worship. And this is true for the church today. Amen? So our team this morning, and we are almost closing, so it will be like a, a closing statement more than this. But I'll make a connection with our anniversary anyway. God answers prayer. Amen? That has been sang so well this morning, all the songs, the worship, I was really uh, filled with the Holy Spirit as we were singing during worship this morning. Amen. If we go to the next, uh, the next slide. Yes. If I turn it on, it will go better. Okay. First verse of... Of course, this is an introduction. We will not go far this morning. Second Chronicle chapter 1, verse 1. Solomon, the son of David, strengthened his royal authority, and the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Imagine, go back and try to imagine, use your imagination. There's a great king. 
He has conquered all the nations surrounding. This is the biggest empire ever that uh, uh, for all the nation. The, the old David is dying. He speaks to his younger, inexperienced boy who is going to be the king of all this great kingdom and he has countries that pay tributes and taxes and he has uh, military forces everywhere and this whole region to the east and the west and everywhere beyond you know uh, lands and lands and he is so young and he is going to become the king of Israel and after his inauguration it took about four years, more or less, to gather all the, the things that David has accumulated, wealth and materials, and gather people and architects and engineers and all of this before. But then Solomon led the entire assembly to worship at the old worship place. You know, the, the tent of Moses still existed at the time at Gabaon. And David had also established a new worship center uh, on, the, on another place in Jerusalem near where he lived. So there was two worship center at that time. So uh, Solomon led all the people and the leaders of the land to worship at the old centers. And he burned 1,000 offerings on that day to the Lord. He was offering himself and all this. And that night, God said, ask me what I shall give you. God asked him what I shall give you. When you read the New Testament, you will see that Jesus offers to all of us similar promises. Ask, and it shall be given. When you pray, believe that you have received and it will be yours. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. If you abide in me, my word abide in you. So we have been given in the New Testament similar promise, opportunities, just like Solomon was given. Ima imagine he's young, he's going to rule this, this land. He's been, uh, you know, if you look back at his life, Solomon was an illegitimate son. His brother wanted to be king and proclaim himself to be king and if he would have succeeded he would have killed the rest of the family. So Solomon was a, a, a rescued child, was a, a prodigy. He was a special child in the plan of God because he had been called uh, and appointed by God himself. So it's not David who says, oh, this is my favorite son that chosen and appointed Solomon. It is God who chose Solomon to be his follower after him. So he has been given these amazing opportunities. Ask. Ask me anything. And that's the questions that I want to leave you with this morning. I don't think we will go any further than that this morning. I want you to think about the privilege that all of us as Christians have been given in Christ Jesus. Ask, ask me, ask anything, ask what I shall give you. What would it be? At different stage of our lives, we will ask different things. If you are a young parent, then you will ask certain things. If you are having a rough time, husband and wife, you will be asking other things. If you are sick, you will be asking. If you are older in life, you will ask certain things. If you are, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying. Different circumstances of our life lead us to ask different things. And we have our motives. And I believe that in this church here, we have a lot of needs. We have a lot of uh, crises that are not spoken, uh, individual situations that you keep for yourself, uh, things that really worries you. 
uh, things that bothers you, uh, hurts, disappointment, um, grudges. Um, you know, th this church will flourish if we go on in unity. This church will flourish if we keep on following the Lord and the Holy Spirit. This church will flourish if we have the fullness of the Holy Spirit, a revival, if we keep on seeking the Lord, if we keep our foundations, if we keep on w walking in humility together, forgiving one another, uh, you know, like letting go of grievances that we often are, would be justified to have. We, we do have grievances. When you are uh, angry or frustrated with somebody or something, it's your feeling, it's your right, it's, it's your emotion. We have a lot of things that we should express to the Lord and, and, and come together and say, Lord, the people of God, the place that has been my home church, the, the plan of God that you have for me, my, the plan of God for my life is interconnected with this church. I'm not separated. I have an individual life. You have an individual life. You do your vacation where you want to, to go. You, you have plans for your life. You, if you are young, you can study whatever you want. You can work. You can change your work. We all have individual plans. But for us here this morning, the reason that we come here every week and we, some of us are closer than others, we eat together, we fellowship together, we are interconnected and lighthouse is kind of a, a bond that we have and this is precious and it needs to be protected and it needs to be renewed and it needs to be brought before the Lord and to an and, and prayer maybe you don't know it but I'm going through a difficult time at the moment my heart is troubled I, I'm not opening up to uh, any of you, uh, but it is, it is a fact. It, it's my life. It, it's, my, it's my heart. It's my emotion. You don't know it. You see me this morning, I may smile, you know, and everything, but maybe I'm, I'm worrying, you know. Um, I have my own issues. You have your own issues. And this morning the Lord says, what shall I give you? So... I want to leave you with that this morning. As we celebrate our 28th anniversary, what's next for us? What shall I give you? What does Lighthouse also needs that is included in what I will, I will ask? Because Solomon didn't ask for himself only. He asked for something that would benefit his role is ministry, is relationship to God, the calling of God. He has been chosen by God to be the king. He didn't know how to do that. And now he's asking, Lord, I don't know how to do this. I need you to put something into my life to equip me beyond my own ability so that I can function and bring glory to you. And God was very positively touched by his motives by the purity of his motives so can we do that this morning close this service uh, and dare to ask to God what do we need this morning what do you need what do I need would you please stand hallelujah hallelujah praise God you knew that we would not function well without a church, O oh God. You have given us a church, a local church, where we have been growing. And Lord, the goal of the church, it's not what we can do. The goal of the church is God's presence. It's God's glory. The goal of the church is that God dwells within us and that we can rejoice and worship the Lord. That's what we learned from Second Chronicle and similar books. God to be first. God to be glorified. The presence of God that is granted to us. 
And Lord, you are inviting each one of us this morning to open our faith, our expectation, our hope, our desire, and to express to you what you are inviting me to tell you what I want you to give me. What an incredible opportunity for me, Lord. And this is what I want to do today, Lord. But I want to think closely, Lord, about what is pure and good for me. And good, Lord, that will bring glory to you. That will strengthen me. That will make a difference in my life. That will help me believe in you more. That will help me love you more. Hallelujah. Lord, we are a church, a special church that you establish here. And thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for this celebration of 28 years. Lord, bless your people. Bless each and every one and renew, renew our mind, renew our hearts, renew our devotion receive the gifts of our life our surrender our obedience Jesus our faith God thank you you answer prayer and you bless your church and Lord we want to continue striving and growing and be the church that you have created us to be. And Lord, touch each individual here this morning and help us, Lord, to renew our prayer life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.